Number one, this church has some basic ideas that they want to pass on to you. Number one, here, nobody's a fake. Okay? Unless you want to be one. <laughs> so we're all open. We care. Nobody is individuals unto themselves. We're a unit. We're a family. Can you say amen? Now, how many here have people in your family? Don't raise your hand. That sometimes they're a little ornery. Do they stop becoming your family? No. But so let me just tell you, in the day and age that you and I live, these are the end times. And one of the things that the enemy is doing, if you haven't noticed, is he divides people. He turns people white against black, yellow against this, this against that, Republican against Democrat. And as long as we're indifferent to one another, Satan has charge of your life. God isn't in charge because you'll notice certain times somebody will say something to you, you'll get upset and you'll be upset all day long. So here we want you to know that God is unifying and God doesn't know any color here. He doesn't know Jewish people and American people. I'm Scottish. Do I let that be indifference? You see what I'm saying? So we're all one. Second thing I want you to know is there's a spirit going on in the world. It's been going on since the fall of Adam. It's a great deceptive spirit. It deceives people. Now, how many parents do we have here? Grandparents, what would you do if somebody took your child and kidnapped him? Wouldn't you want them back? So guess what? Satan kidnapped this planet and the people in it. And the only way that we can get back to God who created us is we have to go the way God said. You have to get on the God bus. His name is Jesus, not religion. Don't shake the preacher's hand. You follow what I'm saying? I walk into my garage, I don't become a car. So we can go to church and not be a Christian. It's making peace with God keeping your eyes off of other people, focus on a personal relationship, and if you're married together, and we have some married couples, work on your team relationship together. Folks, husband and wife who pray together, stay together. Hello? And you'll find out one of the greatest things Satan fights you in is having a prayer time as a husband and wife or as partners. Huh? Amen? Because some of you are still fighting with that. Okay, another thing. Eyes are supposed to be where for Christians? On God. On Jesus. Can you say amen? Eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay? Where aren't our eyes to be? Uh, you guys are going to the wrong thing, but that's the biggest problem you have itself. Eyes off the world. Why? Because the world is passing away. The world promises you all kinds of things, but do they always give it to you? No. The world is not set up to succeed. It's set up to fail. Now, the earth is different than the world. I know I'm, not, I'm taking a little time, but I need to explain this to you. I love the earth. I like to go fishing. I like to go, I don't hunt, but I like the waterfalls and all the pretty things. That's God's creation, but the system in it is corrupt. The financial system, the medical system, the religious systems are all corrupt because who's the God of this world? Satan is. Now, the only way that God, I'm going to say a couple of things. The only way that God can work with this if we make peace with him. God will not bother you if you don't want him. Hello? Unless somebody like BJ prays for you. <laughs> Look out. Anyway, so eyes off the world because it's crumbling. And if your hopes and dreams are in the world, then you're going to get depressed. Okay? So what do we do? We pray for the world. We pray for the lost, right? But we don't take our, our joy from the world, do we? All right, second of all, eyes off of people, right? The reason why people don't go to church is somebody offended them sometime. They got their eyes on somebody, somebody promised them something, and they got let down. Eyes off of people, folks. Eyes off of me. I'm not perfect, nor I run around and, and out loud sin. 
You know what I'm saying? I do my best to follow God. But so eyes off of people because they'll promise sometimes to not keep. People have flaws. Smile at somebody say, not me. <laughs> Third thing, eyes off yourself. Because, folks, the devil can't do anything to you. He doesn't talk your flesh into yielding. In other words, he needs this to yield to him so he can lay a trip on you. How many's ever heard this term? This guy is so good with words. He's such a trickster. He could sell your own shirt off your own back. That's the devil, folks. And the way you know how the devil plays the game, how many's ever been to Vegas? I have. I don't gamble, but I went, I went to Vegas. How many's ever been to Reno? I haven't been yet. Laughlin. There's, how many know what that says? The one arm banner, right? You know? All right. Now, this is what God said to me sometime in my prayer life. And he said, the world's set up like a one arm banner. Sometimes you get good things. And other times you don't get so good things. And you want to wear your entire life out, pull in the handle, go ahead. But for the rest of us, we surrender to Jesus. Can you say amen? And letting him run our lives instead of us running our lives. How's your life been when you were in charge? Made any mistakes? Oh, of course we have. So what I'm relating to you, say, so, well, what's this have to do? Because what I'm going to share with you today is I'm going to show you how I have a devotion with the Lord. And the reason why I'm going to show you that is just to give you a model. Believe me, I'm not anybody. I'm just the least of all. But what I do is every morning I meet with God and I go through a little deal and I'm going to explain it. And then we're going to turn you loose. We're, I guess we're going to have a great time and fellowshipping. Those who want to hang around, we're going to be outside and picnicking and all that kind of stuff too. So as we get into this, I want to make sure you do that. And how many here know that forgiveness is very important? Has somebody ever hurt you? Okay. Why is it we think that they're beyond forgiveness? Listen, if you're going to be a successful Christian, be quick to forgive. Just let it go. Let it go. Because sometimes I'm, I used to be this way. I'd hold on to things so I get work myself into a frenzy, then end up saying something rude to somebody I love. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Hey, by the way, I'd like to talk to you before you leave today, okay, about, about Jesus and, and how he went into hell and, and, he, and he took all that. The reason why he could just rip the devil right off like that, because he already beat the tar out of him before he came in there. All right? How many know that Satan was whipped by Jesus Christ, our, our Lord and Savior? Okay, one more thing I want to give you. When you fight through your life every day, Make sure Jesus is leading your life and you'll find your day will be almost stress-free. You like stress-free days? Yeah. How many of you are like peace? Amen. And pursue it. The only way that that can happen is you've got to let Jesus order your steps and help you process your day. If he doesn't do that, then you're going to make choices by feelings and by words, and by opinions, and sometimes there's not always the best choices. And so we want to make good choices. Ready? All right, Father, bless the word as I share it. Lord, I hope not to keep them too long. It's good to see new faces. I hope that they will share, and we'll get to fellowship a little bit afterwards. So, Father, bring us into this lesson. Lord, let us be uh, people that hear and see the, what you have to show us in the word, in Jesus' name. We've been doing a series called The Truth About, and I've put four sections in The Truth About on prayer. So this one is meeting with God. So if you have your Bible, grab it. If you don't, grab your PDA or your, your phone where your Bible's at. And we're going to talk about prayer. So I want to welcome you, and I want to just begin to bring you into my life. First of all, I believe you should teach by an example you shouldn't just tell everybody what to do and not do it yourself. We call that a hypocrite. Can you say amen? I like to, to, to give you what I know works in my life. But the only way I know it works in my life is because God does the work and not carry. So it isn't about me. It's about this church isn't ours. 
This church belongs to the Lord. The five-acre property, the campground in the back. It's all for the church and it's all for the people of God. The trouble is, is you've been programmed that church has not been a very polite thing for you. Oh, it's boring. It's this, it's that. Who do you think is whispering in your brain about that? Keeping you away from the, de- uh, from the Lord. Amen. Who's playing the little trip, you know? All right. So meeting with God. Number one, we're just going to take notes. I'm going to go through this. And then we're going to cut the lights down just a little bit. And I'm going to bring you into my prayer closet my secret place, and just go through what to cover and talk to you now. I'm going to pretend like you're not here. Because the Bible says that when I pray on a face-to-face basis with God, that I go into my room and have a face-to-face meeting with the Lord and shut everything out. We'll get to that in a minute, okay? Meeting with God. Number one, when the disciples came to Jesus, they figured out that Jesus had something that everybody else didn't have. Now, let me ask you, did Jesus come as God or did he come as man? He came, if you didn't know this, he came as man. Although he was God, he didn't come as God. He came as a man so he could, in all points, be tempted as you and I are, yet without sin. So, when the disciples saw that Jesus was very stable and he was together... Here's what happened. And it's Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Listen to this. Now I came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. You could put secret place there. When he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray as John also taught his disciples. Now, point I'm going to make real quickly is people sometimes are intimidated in prayer. Remember when you first learned about prayer and somebody asked you to ask the blessing over the meal and it was like Thanksgiving? And you kind of, God doesn't want you to be intimidated by meeting with God. He wants you to be invited to meet with him. God is not mad at the world. He's looking for people to come to him. Hello? God is not The one out there is causing the world problem. He's not the one makes people sick. He's not the one that causes people to be born handicapped. That is the enemy and the sin and the nature of people. God is the good guy. Even though the enemy tries to paint him as the guy that causes problems. Well, I had a friend that died of cancer. How come God didn't heal him? There's many reasons. We need to sit down and find out exactly where that person was at. Hello. Now, how many here believe there's electricity in that wall? Do you really believe it? Well, let me give you a knife and you go over there and slot it into there. No, but you know, God is as real as that electricity in the wall, but we don't meet with him enough to get the power in our veins like we need to get it. It only takes a session and we're going to show you how to do that today. So teach us as disciples, teach us how to pray. In the Old Testament, they prayed, but it took a long time for the answer to come. Look at the book of Daniel. But in the New Testament, Jesus already whipped the devil, already put the devil in his place. So when you pray to the Father and you say, in the name of Jesus, you just put the stamp on the letter and God is sending the answer. You're in the New Testament, not the Old So if you're trying to live for God and all you're reading is the Old Testament, you're going to fall short every time because they hadn't received the Messiah yet. So they're looking towards the Messiah. You and I have the Messiah. Can you say amen? We're walking with Jesus. We're talking with Jesus. We are champions because God is in charge of our life. Now, if you're a Christian and you've got a lot of struggles, stop making the choices. For yourself. Make God's choices with him. Say amen. So number one. Teach us how to pray. Okay. All right. Number two. There are rewards to those who pray. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says. But without faith it's impossible to please him. So every time we come to God. Do we present how good we are? No we present ourselves by faith we talk to God by faith we approach God by faith not by works 
God, I've been a Sunday school teacher and I've been in church all my life. What do you think? <laughs> all right. So look what it says. It's, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God, so you have to come to God, must believe that he is, not will be, not was, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently or often seek him. I believe we should seek him every morning for the day. Amen. I, I've, I've, I've done this for years now, but I didn't used to start off. and I just prayed whenever I needed to. Can you imagine being a minister praying whenever you needed to? Must have been every day, all day. <laughs> Moving right on. So God rewards people who pray. Say amen. He rewards you openly. In fact, one of the ways that you can tell a person who prays is they're as solid as a rock. They're not emotional. They're not tossed to and fro. They're not up. They're not down. They're not running around going. They're solid. Prayer. Say amen, someone. Did you know that prayer causes you to have a long life? There's one scripture in the Bible, actually two of them, that says, if you want to shorten your life, be sassy to your mom or those in authority. When you're sassy to people, then authority, you will shorten your life. Read Ephesians 6, Colossians chapter 4. Hello. So don't do that. How many know what happens to us when we're disrespectful to God? So tell me. Can you say amen? My dad told me two things. One of, both of them I followed, but it was only for me. He says, son, there's two things I want you always to do. Now, he wasn't a saved man. He says, well, I said, dad, well, what is it? He says, number one, don't receive a, I don't want you ever to have a tattoo. <laughs> Sorry, those that do, I don't care. I said, okay, dad, I made a commitment. This is to my dad now. This is not to God. I'm not, don't read the extra message in it because I know a lot of you have tattoos. It's okay. But he says, for me, son, promise me you won't have a tattoo if this is coming somewhere. And he says, I said, what's the other thing? He says, don't ever be disrespectful to God or those that love God, ever. Don't ever be caught speaking evil at somebody, even if you think they're a hypocrite. Don't ever do it because you're dealing with God. And he says, you don't want to do that, son. I don't want you dying before your time. I says, yes, amen. So guess what happened to me? I finally got saved. And then when I got saved, you know what my dad said to me? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Remember, he wasn't saved. My mom wasn't saved either. Even she had a Methodist background. He says, what's wrong with you? He says, Dad, I got saved. I have Jesus in my heart. He says, at least now when you talk to me, I know you'll tell me the truth. That's where he was. And the wonderful privilege I had was to lead my mom and dad to Jesus. To hold them and ask them to ask Jesus come in their heart. Man, that just melted me. And so what? I got a father who's my brother, who's my disciple, who's my student. Isn't that weird? Amen. I have several police officers that are brothers in the Lord. I call them brothers-in-law. Move right along. All right. So long life. Say long life. Listen to what it says. First Peter chapter 3. I think we got that on there, don't we? All right, you guys are good. First Peter 5, 10 through 12 says, He who would love life, how many here would love life? Pray. Okay. And see good days. How many would see good days instead of some pretty rough ones? Pray. Let him refrain his tongue from cursing at people, from evil, and his lips from speaking deceit. Don't tell stories. 11, let him turn away from evil and do good. As you sow, so shall you reap. Let him speak peace or seek peace and pursue it. Who's the prince of peace? 12, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. That's you and I because we have the righteous one in us. And his ears are open to their prayers. Say, God always hears my prayers. Amen. Okay. And his face, uh, but the face of the Lord is against those that, what, do evil. Amen. So you want to live long? Spend the time with the one who 
salves and keeps and maintains our life. Let me point out something to you. Study it out for yourself. How many here remember the disciples, some of the disciples? Andrew and Bartholomew and James and John, right? And remember John? John's St. John. That's, what, that's the first book you should be reading as a new Christian. Get to know what Jesus is, okay? What he does, how he acts. You know, John. But also John wrote first, second, and third John, didn't he? And those are more advanced teachings. And then he wrote, by the Spirit of God, the book of Revelations. Here, but here's something about John. Peter and John were in competition to each other following Jesus. Peter was the mouthy guy, and John was the lovey-dovey dude. I'm just trying to relate to you. John would always get shotgun. When it's time when Jesus' group get together, John would be always going for the shot. What shotgun mean? Passing right on into the passenger seat. You guys get in the back seat. So John made a bullseye towards to be with Jesus as much as he could. When Jesus was there, he sat next to Jesus. When Jesus was there, he served Jesus. He just was Jesus, Jesus. And everybody, Peter just hated that about him, you know. What are you doing? Doing this with Jesus. You're not Jesus' favorite. And yet when John spoke, he says, I'm Jesus' favorite. He says it. Now he said, where are you going with this, Pastor Kerry? Here's where I'm going with it. The closer I can get you as a pastor to Jesus, the longer you'll live, the healthier you'll live. You say, well, those, pop, those good, I know a good Christian that died early. You don't know what he was doing in his closet, do you? Huh? You don't. You're judging by eyes. Only God judges the heart. You're not to judge anybody. Say amen. You're to get your life with God and just go after God. I'm never going to put you in a category. I'm never going to say, well, you better live up to what God... I'm going to encourage you to grow, to be who God wants you to be. I don't care where you used to be. I want you to see that you end up and your life is full. That's what pastors are supposed to do. Not... You're not supposed to come to church and be drilled on like a dentist office. I'm coming for you. You know what it's like to head for the dentist office? You like that drill? I love that. I'm not very good interpreter of that. I'm trying to relate to you in the idea that God loves you so much. Satan has set so many lies and so many trips you know, somebody said, would you come to church? And at first, your mind just goes, oh, I was at church last time. I don't know what happened, you know. The mind just goes off. Who do you think is doing that? Anytime you find a resistance to get closer to God, you better run closer to God. Because that resistance is a spirit that's hindering your life. Some of us have four or five of them. And we only show up once in a while. Hey, Amen, we get delivered, don't we? But we entertain these things. We're supposed to be entertaining God. I'm supposed to get so tanked up on God, there's no room for the enemy to mess with me. All right. Let's go on to the next thing. Stability and wisdom come through prayer. Philippians 4. Here's a deal that we all need to do, and I know probably you do it. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. But in all things through prayer... And petitioning or supplication, make your requests known to God. Why do we have to tell God our requests? Doesn't he know? If you don't ask, God cannot answer because he can't push himself on you. You have not because you ask not. Here's the thing. Now, whether you like this or not, this is the truth. Adam chose the devil the first time. And we all fell in Adam. So God, when God came through Jesus Christ and destroyed the works of the enemy and set us up, we're set up on this rule. We have to ask God to get involved with our life. He doesn't come automatically. You could be a little baby and dedicated to a church when you're young and sprinkled and all that kind of stuff. But until you ask God to have a relationship with you, and usually you have to increase that daily, 
then God just waits patiently, wanting to have a relationship with us. And the devil lies as, oh yeah, once you get close to God, you're going to lose all your friends. Shut up! Listen, when you hear your voice telling you something negative, that's not you saying that. Nor is it you using your voice. It's Satan using your words in your brain telling you to stay away from God. So, listen. Listen very carefully here. Every good, every perfect gift comes from who? So if it's not good, and it's not perfect, and it's traipsing through your brain, is it you? Is it God? Who is it? It's usually the devil, and it sounds just like you. And he says, yeah, Pastor Kerry is just full of himself. Look at that. He's standing. He's, he's, who do you think saying that? <laughs> I'm on Satan's list, dude. <laughs> I hope you are too. If you're on Satan's list, that means when you get up in the morning, the devil's afraid of you. He, you might don't touch somebody's life. You might tell somebody God loves them. God forbid. You religious person, you. Let's move right on. So it says, be anxious for nothing in all things through prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving. Make your requests known to God. And the, God, the peace of God that passes your understanding will flood your heart and keep your mind in Christ Jesus. Say amen. amen. So listen, you go on a vacation, you better not go without praying about it. Well, what's God going to do? Tell me no. I don't think so, but why don't you ask him to favor your vacation? Make it worthwhile. You've been coveted for so long. Come on. He's your best friend. He wants to make your life full. But we keep thinking I'm unworthy. I keep doing dumb things. So, so does every other child of God. He's not loving us on the basis of performance. He's loving us on the basis that we love him. Say Amen. Woo! I just get fired up about this. I almost finished you with the scriptures now. Meet with him face to face. Folks, people know. People pray all day long. They talk with God in and out the day. But the thing I'm talking about is where you shut everything out and God and you have a face to face relationship. I'm telling you it's important because in the beginning God came down to visit Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. We've been stolen away from. In the New Testament, anytime we ask God, we can have a visit with him. Anytime we ask God to get involved, he's more than willing to get involved. Anytime we ask God for help, he's going, geez, what took you? He's willing to help us. But he might be mad at me. There you go, thinking Old Testament again. If you have Jesus in your heart, he loves that part of you. He doesn't like your flesh. You're not, you know, your flesh is not going to heaven like it is. Aren't you glad? How would you like to look the way you look forever? <laughs> Come on now, laugh at me. We're all hoping for something better. Can you say amen? <laughs> so... We're going to be changed. So this body, you're not this the blood in this body, and the flesh of this body is corrupted. That's why we keep doing wrong things. That's why there's one thing in your garden. Hey, Linda, one thing in your garden you never plant. It always shows up. What is it? Weeds. When a Christian doesn't pray, when a Christian doesn't get in his Bible a little bit every day, you're going to grow weeds. The old Jew's going to pop up and you're going to put your foot in your mouth. You're going to say something maybe to your wife, God forbid, or to a husband, and it's going to come out wrong. How many can know you can say the right thing the wrong way? So it's important to get adjusted. Can you say amen? So what I'm talking about is we are in a rescue program by God. He wants to adjust us so we can live and understand what he wants for our life. There's nothing more exciting, nothing more God wonderful than, than that. God said to me when I first got saved, he says, son, you want to live life differently the way I want you to? I said, what's it going to take? 
It's, it's, it's going to take you surrendering to me daily. I can tell you in the beginning of my life, I wish I had some time to Linda and I to share with you. I've seen so many miracles only because God is a God of miracles. How many's ever seen lots of miracles? Do you ever see somebody leap out of a wheelchair and nobody touch him? Happens here. It does. Have you ever seen that happen here? Oh, yeah. And you go, this is a little teeny church. That's because at this little teeny church, as well as other great big churches and all kinds of churches where Jesus is the center, miracles happen. Can you say amen? And when God, when you get up before the Father, the Father's going to ask you one question. You, what do you think it is? What have you been doing? No, it's not that. He's going to say, what did you do with my son? Did you develop a deep relationship with him? Or did you just acknowledge him? Either way, you're still saved. But I don't know about you, but there was a time in my life I knew my dad, but then that, towards the end of my dad's life, my life, I really got to know my dad. We became very best friends. I didn't know the guy had it in him. <laughs> you know, when you become a teenager, isn't it amazing how nobody else knows nothing and you know everything? Moving right along. Learn to meet with God face to face no matter what. There's really no successful walk for anyone if they don't become like John. It just doesn't work. Your life will be hard. Your Christianity will be hard. You can read about a lot of saints. Their lives were hard, and then you'll read about ones that their lives were easy. What was the difference? I studied it for years. The difference was how much they met with God. That was the only difference. Not how much knowledge they had, not how many people they shook hands with, how big of a church they went to, how many times they preached meetings. I've been all over the world, and it doesn't matter any of that. It matters how well of a relationship I have with God. Say amen, somebody. All right, Psalm 63, and then we're going to break into this. I, I, I promise the worst thing I can do is watch myself on TV. And I remember the first time I heard myself on tape. How many have ever heard yourself on tape? And you went, who was that? Because do you know when you, when you hear music, you hear it without your outer ear. But when you talk, you hear yourself with your inner ear. You don't hear yourself. You hear yourself. So when you talk, you hear yourself with the outer ear. And when you put it on tape and play it back, then you hear yourself with the inner ear. And you go, who is that? <laughs> and you start judging and making comments. You know how we are. Come on. All right. Psalm 63, look at this. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Your, my soul thirsts for you, God. My flesh longs for you. I'm in a dry and thirsty land where there's no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary. You see, a sanctuary is set up really this way. You come in, all our, all our focus from home, all our problems, we give it to God, and we come to the sanctuary. We come to church to focus on whom? God. And to have a relationship with God and then with each other. But some people go to church and have a relationship with everyone, and they won't even sit under the word. We wonder what's wrong with the church. They know nothing. And Satan loves that. Ignorant Christians. He eats them for breakfast. Listen. Because your loving kindness is better than life and my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied. That's why he prayed. Satisfied. As with Morrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I surrender you to you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. There's two things I always tell people, young Christians. Prayer in the morning is the door to the day. Say amen. And prayer in the evening is the lock for your sleep. Satan loves to visit your dreams periodically. If you've had bad dreams, just simply say, I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind, over my dreams. I will wake up refreshed in Jesus' name. You won't have another bad dream. 
Oh, oh, how many, some, I've had so many bad, when I first got saved, I had the devil on my chest. And he was rat on me. I mean, I couldn't talk or nothing. He was so, my goodness, well, look at my calling. Satan, if you have an important call to God, you think he's going to let up on you? You better learn to, to walk with Jesus. How many here had somebody in high school that was your big tough friend? Maybe you were surrounded yourself with a football team. I don't know. But I was a little scrawny dude and I picked big dudes to be my friends. So when people looked at me, now you might be a big dude so you don't have to worry about this, but for us little dudes, they looked at me and wanted to harass me because they did all during high school. And I started bringing these friends along with me. They, they were friends from school. And I befriended them and got them stuff. And guess what? When now people pick on me, they have to deal with my two friends. Folks, who do you have in your heart? Next time somebody starts giving you harassment, let God out. <laughs> and you have two friends. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Whoops. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. I do that a lot, but thank you. It's got lids. Amen. All right, so let's get into this. Psalms 5. Will you go to Psalms 5? David is sitting there. He's under attack. His children are rebellious. And in Psalms 5, he says, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto you I pray, my voice you will hear in the morning. I believe we should seek God in the morning, before the day starts, letting know he's first. And then it says, my voice you will hear in the morning, in the morning shall I direct my prayer unto thee, and to you I will look up. So I'm going to take this time... <clears throat> we're going to go into my prayer closet. For... <clears throat> <clears throat> and forgive me for my uh, humanness. But I usually start off my prayer closet like this. Can we have the back lights maybe? Is that possible? And if not, you just work on it. What I usually do is I get up in the morning and I hit the coffee on. I'm just telling you what I do. I hit my hot water deal on because I have to eat because I, I have this thing in my flesh called diabetes. Okay. Shut your mind down if it's giving you problems, especially in church. <laughs> and so I approach my private area that I pray. You say, well, what is that? I have a chair just like this one. Of course, it's just not my chair but sure, just like this one, and I approach it. But what happens to me when I feel like I'm approaching God and being with God is I begin to weep. My heart, my flesh begins to humble itself, and I begin to weep. And I sit down, and I don't do anything religious. I just sit down, and I say, Father, I come to meet you today, and I just want you and I to have a special time. Okay, so I'm going to push you out now. The Bible says when you pray, not if you pray, enter into your closet and shut the door and meet with your father in the secret place. So imagine that I'm in my closet, you're not there, and I'm just going to go through some things, I'm going to talk, I'm also going to educate you, okay? So the first thing I want to do is tell you the Lord's Prayer is a pattern prayer, and it gives us enough time for us to cover what we need. In the name of Jesus. So in the New Testament, you pray to the Father in Jesus' name. So it'll sound something like this. So I'll just simply say, Father, I just want to tell you how perfect you are. I just want to tell you how precious you are. It doesn't matter how powerful my Almighty that you would take the time to visit with me, Father. I welcome you. Rise in me and help my mind to quiet and help my flesh to shut up. And Lord God, begin to speak to me and begin to minister to me. So, Father, I just want to hallow your name. I just want to tell you you're, you're important to me. I just want to honor you. To hallow you, Lord, means to honor you. 
And so, Father, I just want to take some time just to honor you and say I thank you and I appreciate you giving your son and that, Jesus, that you came. And Holy Spirit, you have the patience with me, Lord. And Father, transform me, change me. I don't want to be the same that I used to be. I don't want to run around asking people for help, Father. I want to be able to have a walk and a relationship. And oh, Father God, when I pray, I want not only do you hear me, but I want to be able to, my prayers not to be selfish. So, Father, I hallow your name. I appreciate you. You are perfect in all your ways. Thank you. Now, see, that's the hallow part. What you're doing is you're making a connection and you're switching off the outer man and you're opening up your heart to the Lord. And then it says, Lord, your kingdom come. It's a demand. It's a, it's a proclamation. Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, Lord, there's sick people that need to be healed. There's blind people that need to see, Father. There's broken people that need answers, Lord God. Help me to have the things to give them when they ask. And Lord God, things that I'm lacking, please fill up, Lord. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, Father, give me this day my personal daily bread, the things that I have need of. Lord, I can't hoard all of these things, but Lord, the very things I need, Lord, in my soul, in my spirit, the very things I need physically, give me this day my daily bread. And Lord, in doing that, I forgive everybody who, who's wronged me, who's trespassed. Lord, I don't even want to fill my mind with thoughts of what people should have or could have done, Lord. So, Lord, quiet my mind down, Lord God. And, Lord God, forgive me of my debts, my sin, my trespasses. And, Father, I release everybody. Oh, Lord, everybody that's ever hurt me. And, Lord, how selfish of me to think about myself. At this time, Lord, I just want to think about you. I just want to be filled with you. And, Lord, I believe it's happening. And Lord God, I forgive other people their debts and their sin, Lord God, because we don't know what we're doing. Have mercy on us because we don't know what we're doing. Lord, help us to have your wisdom that comes from above. Lord, your wisdom is the greatest thing. It's not selfish. It's pure. It's righteous. It has all of the answers that we need. So Lord, help us to settle down. Help me to settle down and get what you need, Lord, for this day. You have things lined out that I'll probably miss. I don't have you guiding my steps, Father. So I forgive all those who might wrong me, who have wronged me, and I let it all go, Father. Lord, thank you for supplying my need. Thank you, Lord, for helping me release other people and not to bring up their debts or their hurts or their pains to hold on against anybody. And Lord, lead me not into testing and trial. Not, I don't want to be led into temptation. I know, Father, that if I'm in the flesh, I'm going to be tempted all the time. But Lord, if you can help me crucify my flesh when I get up, I'm walking in the spirit realm. Lord, so lead me not into being tested and trialed, into hardships. But Lord, deliver me from the evil wind, the, the, his lies, his deception, Lord God. Lord, let me know when the enemies try to lay some kind of con on us on me, Lord, that I can catch it, Lord God, so that we can walk in the, in the peace, Lord. And I know, Lord, you will never leave me nor forsake me. Lord, even when I disappoint you, Lord, you love me and not my disappointment. Thank you, Father. Lead me not into temptation. Deliver me from the evil one. And Father, I'll remember to give you all the glory and all the power and all the honor. It shall be forever and ever and ever. The devil is defeated, Lord. Jesus is Lord. Now help me to get up from this place, Lord, and to walk with you, to walk in step with you, Father. Lord, to have my mind just quieted and thoughtful with you. Lord, I have a job. I have these things I need to do, Lord. And I thank you that I can bring you and the joy of you in every area of my life now because you said that you would be right there with me. Father, greater is he, you, that's in me. So, Lord, let me rely on the God who lives in my heart and not in what people say or do or what they don't do. Instead, let me be fulfilled in you so I can bring others good things. Thank you, Father, 
Thank you, Lord. I love you. I love you. Lord, I want to be like you. I don't want to be hurt or have pain. I don't want to cause anybody pain. I don't want to say things to hurt people. I don't want to be selfish, Lord. And I know you're going to change me every day. And so, Lord, the thing you want me to do is just to come. So please, Lord, operate and change me. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And basically, that's just it. Now, you're not going to be like me in any way. But you're going to have your own heart. See, you are God's children. You're not my children. You're not the world's kids. God always has a plan with you. So when you start off your day, let him know he's the best. And then after he works on you, somebody will look at you and go, What happened to you? (laughs) Hey. I'm kind of changed. And that's what happens. He works on us. Now, you get something going like that, you know, however you want to get it going, you'll find out a person that does that, and I'm not trying to talk, forget about me. The last thing a person that does that is thinking about is sinning. (laughs) We used to hear this thing, oh, you people that preach on grace. That just justifies people go out there and do what they want. No, you get close to God, and the last thing you'll ever think about is doing anything wrong. Hello? The key is, the devil doesn't want you to get that close to God. Because when you get that close to God, I'm not, not that I am, forget about me. But when we get that close to God, the devil's had it. Two-thirds of your problems will go. Because God will catch you, give you the wisdom before it becomes a problem. If you got something out of that this morning, and forgive my eyes, but I mean, that's just the little part. But sometimes I can get caught up. What, 15 minutes at the most? 10 minutes? God's not requiring much from you. He just needs to pump you with good things for the day. Give the Lord a praise, will you?